Hello friends, Tanya here to do another video for Spellbinders. This time I am going to feature some of the Yours Truly release and I'm definitely having a C vibe this time. I played with the kit of the month with this also for May of 2021. But before we get started on the projects, I'm going to go over some of the new releases that are coming out that I'm using. I am using the Essential Labels Glimmer Hot Foil Plates, which coordinate with the Nestability's Essential Labels dies. These came out last year-ish when the Glimmer Hot Foil Plate that is pictured with the dies came out. And I have both of those and they're awesome. And you should give them a try. <laughs> and the next product that I am going to be using in this video are actually two. Mini Sincere Sentiments Glimmer Plates and Dies and the I'm Here For You Sentiments Clear Stamps and Dies. Now you can see both of these have a pile of wonderful sentiments. They're the same sentiments in both sets. One has got the glimmer and one is a clear stamp and they both have coordinating dies. I am going to tell you that the glimmers are bigger than the stamps and the dies reflect that. Next up, are the elliptical oval dies and the heart swan dies. Now, I happen to have gotten the swans, or excuse me, one of the swans, in one of the past kits, and you may have gotten it too. It was in the card of the month kit from, I think, 2019, maybe February. I'd have to go back and look. So I only used one of the swans, and I do use the elliptical ovals but that's in a bonus project that you're just going to get a look at later. Here are those um, glimmer labels, and you can see it's double lines, kind of like the duo line glimmer foils that have been out recently that come out in circles, squares, rectangles, and ovals. And here I'm showing you that they are coordinating with those label dies. I pulled out the May... 2021 card of the month kit and I am going to use some of the paper. I love the paper that come in these kits. It's pretty lightweight um, so you do have to make some adaptations to that but I can't imagine that they could include these beautiful papers without making them a little lighter weight for the price that they are selling these kits for. I'm using the hinge method to use the polished brass uh, embossing, no, excuse me, <laughs> Glimmer Hot Foil, and I'm taping it down to the front of the paper. And I'm also going to take a strip of cardstock and using a scrap of the foil to foil a sentiment. We're going to start out with, well, we're going to use several sentiments. And I'm giving you more of a close up of each of these uh, hot foiled sentiments. The one I choose to use, oh, I can't even, I don't remember. And I don't have the card sitting in front of me. I'm pretty sure I took it to work and someone also al already has used it. I'm going to use my not the easy trimmer set here. This is just a self-healing mat from my stash and an exacto knife. And I trimmed that off using my metal die, or excuse me, metal ruler here. You'd think I could talk. I mean, really. <laughs> I am going to get one of those quick trimmers though, because I keep having to find ways to make this work that are harder than the easy trimmer. I'm going to take the sentiment down to this piece of cardstock. Now I do recommend using a heavyweight cardstock and you'll see why later. I'm going to put this face down, or excuse me, plate down on my preheated glimmer platform. And I am putting it on the, putting a couple of cardstock shims in between there because this is a lightweight piece of paper and heavier cardstock works the best. And that still glimmered beautifully. I had taken two of those plates. And now I'm going to take the sentiment, which didn't fit on there with the other pieces. And we're gonna glimmer hot foil those also. While that is reheating on the dock, I am going to see, show you how I make these beautiful papers that are not very heavy. 
work out for my projects. I just glue them to a piece of lightweight cardstock, um, something inexpensive from my stash, and just glue it to the back. That's it. And then I can die cut it, trim it however I want to do it. I'm going to use that coordinating label die to cut that out. And in the meantime, I have also foiled this sentiment, but I used a pretty lightweight paper there and I'll have to redo it. Here I'm showing you that all of these sentiments fit into those dies beautifully. Now the again the sentiment banners are smaller on the stamp set than they are on the uh, glimmer foil set because the uh, finished product is smaller. Now I'm going to pull out the dies from the card of the month kit also. And this is an anchor. I Here I cut it out with a rose platinum uh, mirror card from Tonic, but I end up changing that. You'll see that later in the, in the video. And then I decide that I want to cut out a window into the background. So I took another of those label dies and die cut that. And I'm pulling out this deco, I think this is the deco bloom. It's either that or the wistful windows. Uh, and I'll link both of those in the description box below. And I pulled out this most outer detailed frame die and cut that from a shimmery white cardstock. Actually, I think I've had that stashed in the envelope that's holding all of the dies. And um, glued that to a five by seven card base. I do love making five by seven cards and two of the projects I'm making today are five by seven cards. <clears throat> Um, here I am taking some coaster blank. Now I keep getting questions about what coaster blanks are. They are simply coasters that don't have any advertising printed on them. They're the same kind of coasters you get when they, when they bring you a drink at a bar or a restaurant. The disposable, usually they have advertising on them. However, you can buy them as a blank, uh, meaning they don't have uh, advertising yet and um, use them to create some dimension on your projects. They're just pulp board and they are easy to die cut or cut with your scissor. They um, can be stacked, they're lightweight, they're convenient, I love them. I currently get them through Amazon and I'll have that link in the description box below also. They're also recyclable, I love that. And they don't gum up my scissors, which I hate with the foam uh, tape. Now I wanted a little dimension there, so I can add some of that ephemera from the card kit, which has coral and sea life and shells. And I'm going to put those, tuck those in and uh, around and under this anchor, which I'm also popping up with a little bit of coaster blank. And I'm being strategic about where I put those little pieces because um, I'm going to have it overlapping with that frame we created. Now I'm going to add a little Barely Arts Precision Glue to this and start sticking things in and around it. I found these beautiful ephemera pieces. They are lightweight also, not quite as lightweight as the designer paper from this kit, um, but they are still lightweight and I find that adding some dimension behind them really uh, increases their, their uh, value on on your card makes them look even better now we better adhere that label before we start tucking things in or we're gonna get it all the way we like it and then we have to take it apart again i'm gonna add some barely arts precision glue this stuff dries super fast well i mean it gives you a little wiggle wiggle room time and you can gently peel it off it, even at this stage you could have gently peeled some of that off maybe Maybe, since this is at twice the speed, I do speed all of this up, <laughs> which is good because this this video is already 22 minutes long. Sorry guys, maybe you like long videos. I hope you do. <laughs> now I'm gonna take, <clears throat> excuse me, the rest of this ephemera and add the coaster blanks to the back where I need to to keep it even with the rest of the cards. Nothing's going to be saggy or distorted once it's been through the mail and it doesn't have a ton of dimension this just has 
ultimately two layers of coaster blank total on any one area of the card and I try to keep it pretty evenly distributed um, and that's no more than the thickness of a the one thickness of the foam tape because the coaster blanks are so much thinner got the little I think that's a puka shell what do you think and I am using this thanks for being there oh yes because an anchor is very supportive right um, and I'm going to glue that. I like the banner ends on this one. You don't have to use the banner end version. There is a long die with straight edges that you could use, or you could just trim the banners off if you're not a fan of the bannered ends or dovetailed ends. On the inside, okay, I'm only showing you one of the ephemera that I put in here. I have this little um, seahorse, which feels very Father's Day to me. That would work very well for a Father's Day card, but I put a bunch more ephemera in there, and you'll see that in the still photos at the end. Now I'm using a fun color combo here. This is Peeled Paint, Tattered Rose, the new Salvaged Patina, Tumbled Glass, and Broken China. To make a background here, this is going to be a mini slimline card, which is another size that I'm totally in love with right now. And to get the spacing of these strips of color right, I did the top, the bottom, and the middle color that I was going to choose. Do I did those first. Now there's going to be a little white space between each of these colors simply because I put the pink and the green next to each other and I didn't want to make mud and they would have made mud. So that actually really turned out to be a good plan. I really like the way these soft strips of color turned out. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> um, lots of beautiful color there. And now I end up color covering up three of the strips of color mostly, but that's okay. I, I, I still enjoyed making all of those colors and you get little peaks of them. And my card base is going to be a three by six inch card base, um, scored at three inches and folded in half. And I have a piece of shimmer white card stock that I cut to two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And this panel, sorry, no, two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then the ink blended panel is two and a half by five and a half. And then I'm using one of the elliptical ovals and a couple pieces of ephemera, again, from the April 2000, no, May 2021 card of the month kit. And then this um, sentiment from the Glimmer Hot Foil kit. And we're going to pull out some of the gold mix jewels. And we're going to add those to the card. A little sparkle never hurt anybody. So the greens don't quite match the peel paint on this card, but I think it's close enough. I think it really just gives that same vibe. And I love those big hibiscus flowers wrapped in newsprint. I, I think it's just a wonderful mix there. I, it gives the tropical feel all the way around. So next up, I'm taking a scrap of white cardstock and I'm using a sponge, a mini ink blender that I use specifically just for Versamark. And we're going to use this embossing powder from Hero Arts. It's called Sand Embossing Powder. And I love it. It's amazing. And I like that you applying the Versamark with your mini ink blender, you can get this very uneven, uh, natural, organic looking background. And we're creating a beachy uh, scene here. So I'm just going to melt that and I can't tell you how much I love this embossing powder. It's amazing. I love that mix of colors, the different sizes of the grains of embossing powder and um, it's just gorgeous. I'm also using the Trinity Stamps Puffy Clouds stencil here with the tumbled glass uh, ink and a blending brush. And we're just going to keep rotating this stencil around creating a background. Um, 
a, a nice sky. And then I'm going to add a water line or an ocean line. I do end up pulling out, <clears throat> excuse me, a piece of paper to mask that area so that we get a nice sharp horizon line for the ocean. And go ahead and use that broken china to create that um, ocean. We're using somewhat of the same color palette as the previous card. There weren't quite enough of the um, clouds in this particular background, especially for the scale I'm going to be using. So I added a couple more quickly. And this is one of the Essentials Ovals dies, which coordinates with the Elliptical Ovals dies also. And I'm showing you the Foiled Brush Strokes and Stripes Glimmer Foil set. This was a panel that I had created in the past. It didn't quite foil perfectly. And I set it aside and I'm going to use it this time. And we're going to take a couple of the sentiments from the stamp set and I pulled out a couple of dies from an older no sorry that is from this month's or a May's glimmer of the month kit has a couple of little banners there that fit perfectly since I got these uh, this stamp set as a um, design team member or as a, a as a spellbinder sent them for me to create projects I did not get the dies with this stamp set. So I didn't have the coordinating dies. I could have used the ones from the Glimmer Hot Foil kit, but I wanted something that was shorter. And so these happen to be perfect, and that's what I'm going to use. So I am using some Versamark here to stamp on some white cardstock, and we will heat emboss them with some brass embossing powder, which is a rich gold color to me. It doesn't necessarily look like brass, but it's a deeper color. I love that color. Now I did accidentally run my finger right through part of that sentiment and I could have just re-stamped it, but I'd already taken the stamps off of my Misty and put them away. And for some reason I thought it would be less work to just fuss and fiddle and scrape, brush off the extra powder repeatedly until I got it the way I liked it before I heat set it. Have you ever done that? You're just being stubborn because you don't want to have to re-stamp it so you'll make it work? Yeah. I mean, it is just paper. I really could have just re-stamped it. And here's what they look like when I die cut them. <clears throat> and I have a bunch of ephemera again from that kit. I really like this kit. And I could not make myself do another design. I had to use these these ephemera. Sometimes you just have to make the cards that are insisting on being made. I don't know. Do you run into that with yourself? And I'm using uh, Jennifer McGuire's chick trick to use the press and seal. Um, oh, what do you call it? Wrap? Press and seal to pick up the ephemera and keep them all grouped together and glue them and put the glue on so that once you have figured out your placement, you don't have to refigure it out. This is the inside of the card, and I for once had that planned before I assembled the outside of the card. So I glued that all in place before we assembled the front. I really like how that turned out. Here is that foiled brush strokes panel that I thought was a mess up, but couldn't bear to throw away and I end up using on this particular card. I just cut it down to five, no, four and a half by six and a half and put some coaster blank behind that. And here is one of the elliptical ovals. I'm going to place that. I was going to go to one side, but I decided to center it. I tend to center things a lot. That's okay, right? It's okay. We can be predictable sometimes. And I'm going to apply that ocean beach scene and then all of the <clears throat> pieces that I had laid out and picked up with press and seal and put some coaster blank pieces behind. Now we are gluing this over a heat embossed portion which does take longer to dry 
So keep that in mind when you're doing this. I did peel the press and seal off a little too soon. But doesn't this scene make you think of hanging out at the beach with your girlfriends with a nice cool drink, maybe with kids or grandkids running around making sand castles and moats, swimming and fishing and all the fun things that summer is bringing us. Summer is just beginning here in northern Minnesota. In fact, it is Friday of Memorial Day weekend for me when I'm recording this. And it's 32 degrees at my house. I wanted to go camping so badly. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to have to live vicariously through my card. <laughs> now I'm using the silver mix. No, this is the clear mix, I think. Hmm, maybe you can read the packaging. I can't. It's pretty little on the screen I'm looking at. <laughs> and I'm going to do a scattering of these across the card. I do some on the actual main image panel and I do some um, outside of the actual image panel. And um, I am actually more coordinated with these tweezers than I thought. I usually use my pokey tool to pick these up, but the tweezer does a pretty good job too. One more. I think I'm going to put it up. Yep, above the umbrella. What do you think? Does that evoke beach vibes enough to you? Or should we try a little harder? So here are the cards uh, again in still, so you can see them more close up. I don't know if this is highlighting the ephemera from the card kit more or the products that were released in the Yours Truly line. You let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know which of these projects you enjoyed the most. And I'm going to sneak in that picture of the last project with the swan right in here. What do you think? Do you love it? I kind of do. It's a nice little tag, isn't it? If you are interested in any of the product that I used in this video today, please check the description box below. I always link them in the description box in case you want to purchase things. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do that now. And here are a couple of videos that you might like to check out in the future. Until next time, bye-bye.